Happy Chewy. <laughs> Happy Chewy, everybody. Welcome to the Sports Wrap with George and, and Ringer. And it's uh, early February, or, well, our second show in February, but holy smokers, not only did it get cold, it, it, it stayed cold, George. Oh, no, and that wind out there is just howling. I, the sun was shining in my garage, and I thought, I'll just put the garage in and uh, car in and leave the door open, get some heat in there. Oh, man, the wind was coming in there, 30 <laughs> miles an hour. It was so incredibly <laughs> cold. So, you know, you, you have to lock everything up here for another week or 10 days. But I think we're done with it then. But it, it's cold. It really is. It is. It, uh, it, well, what are you going to do? We, we were – we were so fortunate for so long that we we probably shouldn't complain, folks. I mean, no, seriously, it's, it's I just the warmest month in January is the warmest month ever yeah. in January. So yeah, it's it's besides we live in International Falls for crying out loud. It's bound to get cold here from time to time. All my siblings and my mother have, we have a text running text message going, so all seven of us are are involved, and they are all stating the temperature in their at their <laughs> locality, and I'm like. Why are you guys even fighting with me? I, I get I win this by default. Every time. Said, you you fools. You know yeah. I'm gonna have the coldest. So. And you just be just be glad I don't live in tower. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's talk yeah. about the Super Bowl, George. It, what a Super Bowl, Tim. What a Super Bowl. What, was, what, what was, a mammoth disappointment that thing was, George. I well, had, no, the good it was a good first half, and then and then and then the turning point where there was a minute and a minute one left in the in the first half. And there was a two successive or a, a, two penalties out of three plays. And there the old man is knocking on the door and go up 21 to six. And they called the timeout to boot. And they called it out. They called the timeout because they were going to get the ball back, Tim. They just didn't get the ball back. <laughs> they just and, didn't uh, get the ball you know, back. so it, it, it's just like when I saw that, I, we, uh, you and I, we've seen a lot of football games and the air was gone out of the Chiefs. And, uh, you know, they, they came back in the beginning of the second half, and I thought, well, here, this is going to – this is go on. And, uh, you know, and then pretty soon our friend Antoine <laughs> picked up a marvelous pass. That was it. The defense actually kept uh, uh, kept uh, Mahomes on his toes all day long, and uh, the line played well. The defensive uh, – uh, Buccaneer defensive secondary played really well. Well, I think I think – you know, Kansas City had the one injury that moved guys all around. Yeah. You don't really have time to get things going. Um, I watched PTI on Monday afternoon, and I don't usually get to watch those guys because it seems like I'm too busy now. But I sat down and watched it just to see what they were going to say, and I thought they hit two really good points on the head. They talked about the timeout, and they talked about cockiness, arrogance, or stupidity. <laughs> and I thought, well, oh, it started off as a little of both, but it certainly looks like stupidity uh, in the end. And the other thing was the offensive line. They said, and I, I, I'm going to get this number wrong, but they said that Mahomes dropped back to pass 56 times. And yes. He was pressured, was it like 39? He was pressured he, all he after He was pressured long. all the time. Yeah. So the other thing they said, again, arrogance or stupidity with the Kansas City coaching staff, when do you start leaving a tight end in or a tight end and a running back or bring in another offensive lineman so that your quarterback who's got turf toe uh, isn't running for his life? So, you know, there's lots of Kansas City chief bashing about where where is this so-called dynasty? Hey, folks, don't don't. Don't throw the whole dynasty word out the door. I mean, uh, New England won three out of four back in the early 2000s. That's where the dynasty talk started with them. And then they didn't win one for 10 years. So, I mean, Kansas City is probably the favorite to win the Super Bowl next year as well they should be. And their dynasty still is possibly there. But I think just like New England 17, 18 years ago, whenever it was when they – when they lost that game, Kansas City is going to learn some lessons from this. Andy Reid, even though he's been coaching for a bajillion years, is going to learn some lessons. Uh, Eric Bieniemy, when he becomes a new head coach of one of these teams, he's going to have learned a lesson. And so you have to go through those things to, to get better. 
Um, to me, it was arrogance. Uh, that well, well, you know, we'll, we'll, keep we'll just... in mind they had eight penalties in the first half for ninety-five yards. I mean, that's you're well, coming well, close to setting record: ninety-five well, yards and penalties, one half. Okay, so the people were complaining on Twitter and the whatever that those penalties that the referees were calling in the first half against Kansas City were not penalties that were called all year long. So was Kansas City, I'll ask you this question, was Kansas City treated unfairly? No, I don't was, think what, they were, were, were treated were the, unfairly. Were the officials looking at it, and we've argued this on this show before, and we possibly could argue it again, do the referees favor Tom Brady? Does Tom Brady's team get calls that other teams don't get? Does the defense that Tom Brady's playing against get penalties called against them that other teams don't get called against them? Well, this is and how one the writer half, this is how, yes. one writer put it. The Chiefs were too handsy, they were too jumpy, and they were too chippy. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's where they got all their penalties from. Yeah. You know, including including a really really dumb you know uh, personal foul that was just uh, the one the one handsy call that I think you're talking about. They were talking about you don't you know you can't touch them after five yards. Well, okay, right. I understand that's the rule. That's that's completely bogus when you're defending a guy and he turns this way and you go this way and he turns and runs back against you. You're going to run into him. You're going to oh touch the arms him. are flopping so, around and so their your hands, hands are going to come yeah. up because you're trying to turn and do whatever right. you do and yes you touch right. them and whatever else so to me i don't think that that's a penalty and i think one or two of those kansas city chief penalties were because of that so i feel like somehow some way that was made a point of emphasis did it affect the outcome of the game maybe because when tampa got that last touchdown right before halftime that Breeze did in all four of the playoff oh. games that came out to me. Um, that that, that kind of was a statement. But when Kansas City came out in the second half and got the ball and drove down, and they had to kick their third field goal. Field goal. They couldn't get it in the end zone. Yes. That's when the doubt started. And then, of course, the touchdown from there made it 28-9. I mean, Tampa amp- answered just like that. And the game was over. The game was the game was over that quick. It wasn't a real exciting game, but uh, but you know there were some standards set, and also, you know, I, I one of the reasons I was kind of pulling for the Buccaneers is because of Antoine Winfield, and you know, I he when we first saw him play when he was a freshman at the Gophers, you'd say, "Ooh, this kid looks like he has some potential," and then you'd say after three years, "Oh, he could go first round draft," and now you say. What is the limit of this man? He has had an outstanding rookie season, and uh, uh, you know, and he had a great game. There's a picture of of the defense in in the, the row your boat fashion from the University of Minnesota, and he's smack dab in the middle of it holding the football. Uh, this this uh, uh, that was that was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, it's great that uh, that a couple of Gophers won a won a championship. One would either way. Kansas City's got a starting linebacker. That starts for them, so Gopher fans are going to be happy. Yeah. Um, I hope, because there was a lot of chippiness, and of course Tom Brady uh, apologized to uh, to Matthew about uh, whatever they bickered about the entire game, and of course the the V sign that uh, uh, what's his name from uh, Kansas City? My goodness, uh, Tyreek likes to give everybody when he's scoring a touchdown, and then your buddy Antoine goes over after they uh, drop the ball and gives them the sign. I understand those things. Uh, we've been, they, they've played football for a long time. One of the things that we try to teach our kids, that we try to teach our kids, George, was about controlling your emotions, about, oh, no about being whatever. No, don't be chippy. Don't, be, no. don't no. rub it in people's faces. No. When you win, act like you've been there before. Lose with class, all this other stuff. and. I, I didn't like it. I'll, I'm just going to say it that way, George. I didn't like it. It puts a, it puts a blemish on how well he played in that game. I understand you got bitterness. He get what? I understand. I get it. But you can go over after the game or whatever and say to Tyreek, you know what? 
you can take that peace sign and stick it in your ear, but when you get a 15-yard penalty in a game, that's not cool. That's not no. cool at all. Not in my no, book. It is not. A lot of no, I think I, other I, people they think it is, but I don't. I hate it. No, I. You know, I'll tell you. I coached and I and I participated for a long time. I never got a red flag, and uh, and I was always I I got I got several warnings, but I I never got a flag. <laughs> Basketball, football, not even wrestling. I got mostly my warnings from wrestling. I have to say that. Anyway, I, I, uh, I have one more question to ask. Sure. So after you watch this game, somebody posted this out on Twitter, and I thought it was a great conversation point. And the question was this. What's more important, a quality offensive line or a mobile quarterback? Because we've talked about mobile quarterbacks on this show at infinitum, it seems like, and that everybody's going to the mobile quarterback. Kirk Cousins cannot win. Kirk Cousins cannot win. Well, we saw what happened to Patrick Mahomes, who's a very mobile quarterback, and he showed us that. And even despite how mobile he was, he was harassed to the bejeebers, and they didn't win. So tell me what's more important, folks. I've said you, this on the show. You're not going to keep. You're not going to keep your mobile quarterback around very long if you don't have a quality offensive line. And so, it, uh, so you know, and why you are they giving mean, Mahomes five hundred million dollars? When they should be giving it to the offensive line because they make the they make it go around. Without them, no. you can. You know, Mahomes passed what 50, 55 times. Brady passed twenty nine times. He he completed twenty one of them. And he was only pressured four times. Four times. Four times. No interceptions. And you know what? They, you know what? Our good friends uh, at CBS and of course people were gouging. Uh, what's his? Uh, come on. Uh, T Tony Romo, they were gouging him on Twitter. Oh, I thought he was so good. Blah, blah, blah. He's the best. I don't understand what people are arguing about. There's no, there's no color guy out there that even compared even close to Tony Romo. I don't care what you think. You're wrong. Go away from me. You can't. Uh, Tony Romo's the best. That's why he's getting $17 million a year for doing 20 games because he's that good, folks. Anyway, what were they talking about? Tom Brady came in and said... They were talking about them being seven and five, seven and five. And then they turned it around. They ran the table or whatever they did. Okay. And what did they say the difference was? Tom came to him and said, look, two tight ends. I need two tight ends on the field. Got to take care of the quarterback. Okay. We got to take care of the quarterback. You can come up and block and be yeah. ready to go. And then if things don't look right in the defense, you can send those tight ends out if you don't think you need them. But you got to bring them in, and if you got to protect, you got to protect the forty-three yard with seven guys. You got to protect the guy, and and. Uh, like I say, without the offensive line, I don't know what kind of tricks you have, but it's not going to work. It, it, that's kind of where it starts. And on the other hand, how did they defeat? How did they go about uh, defeating the Chiefs? Well, and this goes back to Damon Lewis and 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 the linebackers. They played one linebacker back, two linebackers back, and one up, and they ran right at those guys. Uh, uh, they had 150 yards rushing compared to 100 for the Chiefs, and and that 50 yards might have made all the difference. Yeah, um, I, I I wish I wish uh, Jacksonville could explain Leonard. F somebody would explain to them about Leonard Fournette. And what he did uh, in the playoffs, but yeah, he, um, he's no good. He'll never make it. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know, it's always, you know, people always complain. Well, look at so and so, the the big one, the Twins, or the Wild, or the Timberwolves. Oh, they traded somebody and he went and won a World Championship. They should have never got rid of him. Well, wait a minute now, folks. Do you understand the? free agency world that we live in you really that, that, particularly that, in baseball that, that people are going to go to other teams and they're <laughs> going to win championships that doesn't mean that they are a better player when they left or whatever okay minus david ortiz the uh, steroid taking son of a gun but anyway i digress i digress on that anyway it you you can't make those comparisons so i don't want to hear anybody say anything about all oh, this player got traded or that this is this is the this is the nature of the beast. Teams change players, quarterbacks. Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford. We talked about them last week. They wow. change places. Yeah, Goff, Jared Goff. Yeah. I, I, what? what 
So if Goff goes to Detroit and Detroit turns it around, Matthew Stafford was the problem? No. No. He, you don't, don't. Besides, I got a feeling, I got a feeling Matt Stafford's going to do real well in L.A. I think so, too. Kind of an L.A. type guy. No, he could go, he could go the same road as Phillip Rivers, though. He could. One year, get out of where you've been forever, play for one year, and then say, I'm done. I'm, it's over. I, I, I did what I was supposed to do. Uh, I had some fun. I made, some, made a lot of money <laughs> and whatever else. And, of course, if I can transition here, if, if that's okay with you, uh, you want to talk about somebody who found out that, yeah, I, I, I can leave, but it's not necessarily as fun. And that's Miko Koivu this week who uh, signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets in the offseason after playing with the Wild for, what, 15 years? A long time. And uh, found out, you know what, I, maybe I don't have it anymore. And I found out real quick that I don't, want to, I don't have to do this anymore. I had a great career. Uh, I can move on and I can, you know, I didn't win a championship, but I can, I can hang my hat on the fact that I did a lot of good things over the years and, and everything else. So, um, I've talked to a lot of, I've known a lot of old hockey players and they, and a number have told me sooner or later, you know, you have to hang up the skates. Now we have, we have, uh, uh, our old timers tournament here and they got a guy that's about 90 years old that's still skating so that doesn't work for everybody but but you're right competitive hockey is an extraordinarily difficult sport and you better have the fire to go in there and 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 like like he said i i i didn't have it from day to day and i and i i'm thinking at those times practices can get long oh. and, uh, and you know when it really when it stops long. being fun or like yeah, it's like having a job, Ooh. and it's then then you know that it's time to to step away, and you yeah. gotta know how to step away. And of course, the Wild know about stepping away. They they're gonna have an extended vacation. They're uh, a mess. Uh, 12, 12 players now tested positive or whatever today, and I'm just like, well, let's see. Now every time they get a new one, that just keeps pushing them further and further out, and. So we don't have to worry about the wild break in our hearts or making us feel great. I would say for at least another week. I think a week from Thursday, week from tomorrow, they is their next scheduled game okay. after the cancellations here. So, and I and I think they're looking at that longingly. So it may or may not come. Well, and yeah, and it's. Are you surprised at all that we've had? Maybe this few. I know the Wild, uh, the Wild aren't the only team in the NHL. The Devils and two other teams that have been going through this where they've had a number of games uh, postponed. Of course, we had it in baseball. Um, the NBA has had their issues along the way. Are you surprised that there hasn't been more of it? Or is this about right? Well, I, I am. Uh, you know, because it's, it's so difficult to have that many people um, maintain the protocols that you need to keep it, you know, to keep it. I mean, I've been in this house for damn near a year because if I go outside, they're going to get sick. I mean, I understand there's some serious limitations and these guys, you know, athletes are so strange because they, they only have finite time to make money, to play the game well. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's like anything else. We don't see very many and that's what makes Brady so remarkable. 43 years old and he's doing that. You don't see a lot of 43-year-old football players or, or any other kind of players for that matter. They, they, you know, I mean, that's old for a golfer. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Well, you know, I think about this COVID thing with, with these pr professional teams, and then you see what North Carolina men's basketball team did on Saturday night after they beat Duke. And, of course, I understand it's a rivalry game. I get it. Neither of the two teams are what they have been in the past, but they go out to celebrate and then they're out there and they got, they got pictures of them in the crowd, no masks on doing whatever, you know, typical 20 year old stuff. And then they've got it. And then they can't figure out, well, why should we have, why should we be just mad that our game was canceled on against Miami two days later? And it's just like, geez, Louise guys. We, we, yeah. Think about it just a little bit. And gosh. it's, you know, and I mean, if you want to play, this is kind of the deal that you have to do. And, and don't you want to play? Don't you want to play? <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I understand it's a, 
it's kind of the, well, we'll get into some of the other stuff later, but there are an awful lot of restrictions. Um, I, I noticed the group from, uh, from Minnesota now, the let the boys, let them play uh, um, organization, the, the judge told them no, that you will follow these rules, that this is, this is the way that they're set up and they're legal and, um, you know, and, I, and they took, you know, they, they took offense to it, but that's kind of the way it works, I guess. Well, and I think, you know, I, I understand where, where parents are at. I, what I don't understand is what, when are you going to be happy? Okay. You got the, yeah. the whole complaint was they're not getting a chance to play. So now they got all they get a chance to, all we want is a chance for them to play everybody. That's all we're here to complain about. Well, then they get the chance to play, but they got to wear a mask. Oh my gosh. Blah, blah, blah. Well, now what would happen next? Well, they don't have to wear their mask folks. Okay. Let them go play without their mask. And then what are we going to complain about that? They can't have advertising. The kids can't advertise. Uh, the kids can't wear their necklaces because they want to wear their necklaces so that they look really cool. So let's let the gold chain bang off their chest while they're running. I mean, folks, I, I'm just, I'm talking to you guys out there and you know who you are. Some of you watch this show and whatever else I'm talking to you. Sometimes you just got to say enough. Okay. Enough. I got to be happy with what I get. Instead, I got to have something always to complain about. And there are people like they're out there that have to have something to complain about that it's wrong. Maybe some people think about that about me. That's fine when they watch this show because I seem to complain about everything. But I'm not talking about, I hope I'm not talking about endangering people's lives when I'm complaining about things. And it just drives me. You, you've, seen, you've seen kids compete this winter. Is the mask interfering with their play, their breathing, any of the physiological things? Can a guy do as much time uh, shift on the ice as without the mask, that type of deal? I'll, I'll, I'll give you what I can on that. Um, I don't think I've seen it affect the length of the shift. I don't think that I've seen it affect how long a kid can run up and down the basketball floor. Uh, my son plays hockey. Uh, Tuesday night when he got done with practice, he came out and the thing was soaked, snot, sweat, the whole thing. He's six, okay? He, it, it, is, it is what it is. Now, I will say this, okay? When I'm out there doing my thing, okay? Okay, you can see how large I am. I feel like when I have the mask on, I do feel like I get short of breath. But is it in my mind that if I didn't have that mask on, would I still be short of breath after I climb up the stairs to my classroom and walk all the way down the hall, carrying all my stuff into the room? Do I feel whatever? Yeah, no, I feel tired. Is it because I have the mask on or because I'm so badly out of shape? I think it's more has to do that I'm that badly in shape, but I like to blame it on the mask thinking, well, I'm better off than I really am. I talked to some of the kids about it, specifically the basketball players, because I have them in class, and they seem to want to talk about it. And they say, we've gotten used to it. We don't like it, but we've gotten used to it. And so, to me, was it an inconvenience? Is it an inconvenience? Absolutely. Sure. Um, yeah. But it's just like wearing a helmet, you know, uh, for football or having your mouth guard in. I think we've talked about this before. Or you can't have certain things on when you're playing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, to me, the kids have gotten used to it. And just like everything else, the kids will, will adapt and overcome because they want to play. They want right? to play. And, of course, some of the people are complaining, well, the college kids aren't wearing their masks when they play. Well, they're in a different situation. They're getting tested how many times. If we had our kids being tested every day or every other day, I think we could say, man, eh, let's forego the mask, but we don't have that kind of money. So um, maybe instead of us throwing frivolous lawsuits out there that aren't going to be whatever, maybe we should throw that money towards uh, buying tests for everybody. Thank yeah. You. Let's play. Let them play, Minnesota. Thank you. Let them play. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway, where are we going? Uh, just want to talk about the Timberwolves briefly. Yes. Uh, they, they continue to confound – people, me, everybody else. Cat is with the team. They don't expect him to play for a while because he's so badly out of shape because I suspect he didn't do a whole lot when he was out, which you got to take care of, not take care of your health. So um, till, till he comes back, 
So he gets up to speed. I'm going to quit passing judgment on the Timberwolves. However, I am not going to watch them either. I cannot waste my time on a team that has me on a yo-yo. Well, I, fo- I like, found a new guy that I like to watch. You do? Naz Reed. You like Naz Reed? Naz Reed. He came in, scored 29 points against Oklahoma the other day and took the final shot before they dropped at 128-118. What do you like about him? What does he do that you like? Well, he, he goes to the basket. He goes hard. He, he, he was rebounding hard, playing defense. But uh, uh, this, was, this was a highlight game for him. He, he'd never scored this many before. And so it's nice to see. And I'll tell you, you know, every time, like, uh, like uh, uh, you know, Carl Anthony's done and, and all the rest of that, somebody there can come in and pick up the pace. And you've seen this happen many times in sports. So have I, and the, and, and the guy that seemed to come up and pick up the center was, was Naz Reed. And, uh, and I, I just thought, you know, I mean, he had, uh, he had, uh, he had six rebounds with that. Then he was, he was 12 of 21. And, you know, those guys in the paint, boy, they were in their dough in there. There's a lot of, <laughs> that's, that's contact sport there. I, uh, I want to become a Naz Reed fan too, like you, George, but he's got to start doing it game in and game out if he wants my if he wants my love if he wants my respect he can't score 29 once and then disappear for three weeks like ricky rubio he's got to do this night in and night out if he wants well to. i i realize that but I, I i wasn't aware that he was even that, that he, he was, was even alive all of that and all of a sudden he pops up hey we got to look for a highlight on this team and uh, and, so- and the other day it was naz reed no doubt about it <laughs> yeah i agree so well, would you like to talk about the Gophers for a little while? We can talk about the Gophers. What sport would you like to talk about first? Um, well, I suppose we could talk about uh, – well, I don't know. What you, who do you want to talk about? Well, let's talk about the men's basketball team first. It's at the top okay. of the list. Okay, we talk about the men's. Um, well, you know, they played, they played um, uh, uh, Nebraska the other day. And Nebraska's on a 23-game um, uh, losing streak in the Big Ten. And so you can't be wagging your tail too high about this. On the other hand, they did it for the most part without Leon Roberts. And, 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 and they've they got only 19 minutes out of, out of Marcus Carr, which is, uh, which is his, the, the fewest minutes he's played since he's been a gopher. And, and the rest of them seem to pick it up just a little bit. Uh, um, uh, Brandon Johnson, he, he popped in like 13 and, um, and, and Mashburn got 11 and, and my good friend, Gabe Kelsher, I'll tell you, you know, I, I die when he takes the three, cause I know he's going to miss and he, you know, he just, but he plays so hard. Uh, I didn't see him leave the court, but just a couple of minutes, he was on defense, just busting his butt rebounding and going any 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 picked up 10 points if he keeps on doing that but but Tim these these threes they're not even close and it's uh uh you know I feel I feel real bad for him but I overall I thought the team performed well without the boys yeah I thought the bench did well and you know the Big Ten Network was being very positive about that trying to put a positive spin on two guys that have to learn to control themselves I mean they, I thought they made a great point. Liam Robbins leaves Drake. Drake's ranked number 25 in the nation. Hmm. hmm. I wonder. Well, what, is, what does that mean? That Drake I don't been, know. You... <laughs> would Drake have been better with Liam Robbins, or are they better because he left? Well, it's hard to say. I don't but, you know. know. There, was, there was another time there was a point there that the Gophers went on about a six- or seven-minute drought, and they couldn't buy a bucket. And all of a sudden, Trey Williams comes in, and pops and pops this incredible three, and bam! And he went on a little bit of a tear. And so you don't know where some of these guys are gonna are gonna pop up from. But Trey stopped that drought and stopped the bleed. And uh, because Nebraska was kind of coming back, and and it would have been it would have been really bad to lose to Nebraska in the barn. Would have been horrible. Yeah. What about the Gopher wrestlers? Well, the Gopher wrestlers, they're doing pretty well. Um, uh, they. Uh, they beat up uh, 
in Piscataway last weekend, they had a good they had a good tournament and they won two matches, and they're coming back and and uh, everything is kind of setting up. They have Illinois uh, that they're going to wrestle. Um, uh, uh, did they wrestle them this week? They wrestled Illinois this past week. This yeah. week, and so um, who they got this week? I have no idea. That's why I came to came, came, to, came to me. I just <laughs> you know they they were talking about the fact that it I I love how the Gopher Wrestling Twitter feed was trying to make more out of this. It was 1913 against against Illinois. And Gabe was coming in. Gable, excuse me, not Gabe, yeah. Gable. And they're like, well, the, the, the meat is still in doubt. And I'm like, no, it's not. You've got, you've got the best closer since maybe ever for the Gophers. And oh. you're, you're trying to tell me that this might be in doubt. What did it take, 34 seconds for uh, oh Gable God, to finish no. it off? I didn't like the celebration. I don't know if you saw it or not. But after he got the pin 34 seconds in, he didn't even go shake the guy's hand. He came out and did something like this, some cool move. And he ran off the thing. And I'm just like, class, Gable, show some class, please. This is what we want you to be, class. Anyway. Yeah, no, no. I mean, he actually wants to go out and, and compete for the Olympics and complete, compete like Olympic champions. And that's not the way Olympic champions compete. Ah. And he does have he does have some great uh, great skills and and be an outstanding wrestler. I mean, at no end, he could be undefeated the rest of his college career. Sure, yeah, I fully expect that that's be. the way it's going to be. I don't yeah. expect him to get beat. No, no, I don't either. I mean, if he, if he does, that's that's going to be a ginormous upset. I don't care even if it's in the NCAA finals. That would be no, a I, ginormous upset. Right now, he's the best heavyweight that I've seen. And yeah. he's beaten all the good ones anyway. So Michigan's got a good heavyweight, and but he's already beaten the guy from Iowa. Iowa and Penn State were going to wrestle this week, but that was canceled. Okay. Which is too bad because uh, – That, that would have been a classic. Yeah, that would have been a good duel. UMD men's hockey, 28 Ooh. shots on goal in the first period on Saturday, and they almost – they almost lost. My goodness, they, they looked so good in the first period. Of course, Friday night, they absolutely thumped on Miami uh, 8-1. And, uh, yeah, the, the dogs hung in there. They persevered. They've got a good team. Um, and they, you know, they did what they had to do. Uh, they announced this week that the NCHC is changing their playoff format. Single elimination played out at the Ralph out at North Dakota. So North Dakota gets the advantage of, of – uh, being the home team, and of course, I suspect, and maybe I might be wrong, but would North Dakota let people in by that time so that the NCHC could make some money? Let's see. Yes, I believe that will happen. I believe that, yeah, if they're going to do it anywhere, it, w it would be in Grand Forks. No two ways about it. It will happen. So, yeah, the dogs had a good week, and uh, let's hope that they can continue. Yeah, they're in the first place in their conference right now. They got Western Michigan this weekend, and St. Cloud has Miami of Ohio. And so, uh, you know, maybe I, they're probably not going to break away too much from them. And no. then Colorado College at Noma, Omaha and Denver at, at North Dakota. But that should that, be a good one. That, 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 that Northern Collegiate Hockey Association, Hockey Conference, pretty good conference. Pretty good conference. Good stuff. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, the Dogs in, the, in St. Cloud State play the last weekend of the regular season. So that could yeah. decide who's the, uh, the, the top dog, pun intended, I guess. Uh, at the at the end, uh, I got a couple other things. You want me just to throw them out there? Yes. Uh, the Major League Baseball announced that seven inning double headers. Yes, are, are I saw good, that. Are a good thing. Interesting, good thing, and that they will be starting extra innings with a man on second base. Uh, that I was kind of surprised about. I was shocked at that. I thought that they yeah. would let that gimmick go. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no universal DH either, huh? No universal DH. Uh, that's now we know up. why. Now we know why Nelson signed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that 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 that, that kind of said before they announced it that that's what was going to happen. So, Australian Open started this week. Tennis. Yes. I was very, very pleased uh, to to get to watch some tennis. They got some stand, people on the stands, which may or may not be a good idea. Uh, apparently, they believe that they've got the virus under control in Australia, which is great. Um, no major upsets, really, yet. I Not mean, yet, no. major, major, any, any shockers, although Venus 
she got hurt last night and got beat six one six nothing. So, um, but are I've been enjoying. Both, are both both Venus and Serena playing? Yes, they played. Yeah, Venus lost last night. Serena didn't look so good the first match. She looked pretty impressive last night, and I know it's early, but we'll see how it all goes. Did you happen to get to watch uh, UConn and South Carolina on Monday night? I did, and uh, you know, I'll tell you. Paige Bokers is really amazing. Gino, Gino says, he said something like, she's the one that you come, that everybody knows, that everybody comes to watch. And I thought, she had 31 points. She had five or six steals. She had six or seven rebounds. She was all over the place. She scored the last 13 points of the game, Tim, uh, and, and, and won it in overtime. You know, twos and ones, sometimes they're overrated. This game was was not. No, and, you know, the scary part about it was they talked about how few three-pointers were made in this game. And I don't know what to make of that other than there were plenty shot, but they they weren't going down. Can, can I have one complaint about Paige, though? Sure. She doesn't look like she's having fun. And I know it's, I know it's a business thing. I get it. I get it. But dang it, when you hit a big shot, could you at least smile? Could you at least show me that you're having a little fun? You know, it's Wait, it, the way she hits big shots, she'd be grinning all the time. Well, she should be. <laughs> she should be. Yeah, you, you, you hit it right on the head. Uh, she scores 31 points. The three pointer that she hit to seal the deal. Yeah. Some people might call it lucky. I mm-hmm. say that's hundreds and thousands of hours in the. In the gym, a lot of shots. Throwing up a lot of shots. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a fun game to watch. So. It, it, it really was. And, I, you know, and I, I'll tell you, you know, it's uh, – yeah, she's the player that comes along that people talk about. And that's what Gino uh, said about her. And, 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 and she really is. It's amazing that we got two, two of the finest basketball players in the country right now out of the state of Minnesota, and they're both doing very well. Absolutely. Good wow. to see. Good basketball, to see. basketball state. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's changing. Maybe it is. Yes. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, Bronco sports. Is that all right? Yes. So uh, let's start with the boys hockey team. Uh, tough one last Thursday, four, three loss in overtime to Greenway. Uh, exciting game. Lost on the road last night, six, five, in overtime to North Shore, first win of the year for North Shore. So that was a tough one. Uh, heard Mitchell and Nemec played really, really well, or it could have been a whole lot worse. Girls basketball got a nice 63-49 win over Chisholm the other night. So uh, a good win there. Girls hockey lost at uh, North Shore 2-1. to one. Remember now, that was the third time those te- two teams have played, and the Broncos really closed the gap. This weekend, yes. they go to Sox Center. Right here, I'm saying it right now. Broncos win. Oh. Uncle Girls Hockey wins this Saturday. I'll happens. celebrate that. I'd celebrate that. I would celebrate that. That would bring a long winless streak because remember yes. last year they had one tie? Yeah. Boys swimming and diving lost to uh, Grand Rapids and to Rock Ridge. Uh, or, uh, over the past uh, couple of weeks, they get Masabi East on Thursday. And uh, <laughs> I have to say this. Coach sent an email to me with the results. And he talked about Rockridge, and he said they are absolutely loaded. This combination of Virginia and Evelyn, he said. That gonna is going to be a powerhouse, Tim. You knew that. Powerhouse. So, And then the boys' basketball team lost to Northwoods last night, 78-68 uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, just couldn't get over the hump. They were there. They were close, but couldn't get over the hump. They just tough one to lose by 10 points. Yes. Section and state playoff dates have been set since the last time we spoke. Uh, and we'll talk more about those dates as we get closer to them. But uh, look to the middle of March, the week of the March uh, 15th, I believe, is a Monday. Basketball playoffs start that night for Class A. And then the next couple of weeks are for sections. And then the following two weeks are kind of for the state tournament. Uh, of course, that will all get rolled in to the NCAA tournament for men's and women's basketball and everything else. So 
hang on for mid-March. It's coming. The, the madness will be true madness, but we'll probably have to wait until mid-March to get there. Well, like I say, the, the, the virus thing is, it has control right now, and it's going to maintain that control until, uh, uh, you know, we work out a way to do this safely. But, hey, we're all biting at the, at the bit, I'll tell you. Can't got to get it going. For sure. Well, you got anything else before our final tributes? Well, yeah, I tell you, I, a couple of things um, yep. on some comment. Russell, Russell Wilson out there in Seattle. We're getting a lot of rumors that uh, – that he, what Russell wants to do is is to help pick personnel. Yeah, what he wants to do is put the team around him, and uh, and whatever it was, there was enough controversy in Seattle that you know I imagine the radio talks were were popping and everybody was getting excited and and he, like you say after the Stafford Stafford uh, Goff thing, it's it's hard to say. What might happen? Well, he got named NFL Man of the Year, so why shouldn't he get to talk, right? Why shouldn't he get to talk? And besides, if I had a man that had that many skills, I'd certainly listen to how he'd want to build a team. He should have some input in it. He's been around for a while. Been around. He's earned his stripes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What else you got? Uh, I'm just curious as to how you're going to feel about uh, uh, about the Dallas Mavs uh, and, and no longer doing the national anthem. Well, NBA changed their minds today and said that you will play the national anthem before games. You okay. will. You will. That is mandated. That, there there must out, have been. There must have been a morning. little. There must have been a little political pressure on that one, you know. But I, I years ago, and this was because you know you get so so routinized in in, in your sporting events. I'm reading a book by Howard Cosell, and Howard Cosell made the argument that he saw he saw a, a, a little connection between patriotism and sporting events and uh, and they went through how how you know the national anthem started playing at a world series in the 20s or something i've heard a couple of different versions but uh but i i was i've been kind of waiting to see if all this controversy uh can go down it's it's uh you, you know, you go to you go to a game. It's kind of like you got to pray first, <laughs> and and uh, and and so I, I I can see where where uh, Rubens where they're going on this. I really do, and I think somewhere along the line that might happen. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting thought. You know, if you if you say you you don't want the national anthem or whatever, then yeah. you're patriotic. You or, you know, all this other stuff. And I, I, I understand. Oh, I know guys that have beat me on the head for what I've just said. I, I, I understand that argument. Now, yeah. I will say this, okay? When I was announcing hockey, basketball, all that other stuff, I was standing up for the national anthem like about 120 times a year. And I don't want to sound unpatriotic, but – when you do it 120 times a year, it starts to lose some of its aura. So, I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah, it, that's it, exactly it, right. It, it loses its mystique, and I'm not. Like I said we we're probably going to get ourselves into tr trouble. For yeah, we, we are, we are. But it, it, it's just like if you listen to your mother and she tells you to pick up your room, after about the 50th time, you're just kind of like, "Are you talking to me? What?" I, I'm hearing you, but I'm not listening. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I, I can't wait for five years, and I'll talk to Eli about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, else, what else you got? Here, I, I think that those that might be pretty much all of my notes. Um, uh, the volleyball team is still hot to trot, and although they had to go to five sets, they had to go to five sets, but they won in overtime. But I tell you, they play on Friday. And Tim, they are fun to watch. Those big hitters on the side, they really put the whap on that ball. And it's uh, like I say, that, that that would be a very dangerous, very dangerous place to get stuck up on. I just I can't believe I lost my notes on that. But <laughs> they're uh, uh, they're they're a very good team, and they play um, on on was it Saturday and Sunday on BTN and they're playing at Penn state. And so this will be, I'm going to watch them. I, 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 
Um, I am a volleyball fan from time to time. I I watched uh, who was playing the other morning, Illinois and somebody doesn't matter. There was lots of other things I could have been watching. I, that's what I watched because yeah. I enjoy watching because I, I think it's incredible what what they do, how hard, how how they make things happen, bump stuff, oh. and they're perfect. They just oh, they are, and it's they're crazy. They're so tall and they leap so high. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. They are fun to watch. So I'm going to keep an eye on them. They're going to go far this season. There's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, and, and that might be it for me, but, but our tributes, um, I know one of that I, I wouldn't mind talking about just a smidgen, and that's uh, uh, um, um, Marty Schottenheimer. Um, yep. He played Marty Ball. I loved Marty Ball. Marty Ball, man, fullbacks and defensive. <laughs> like, you mean like the Minnesota Vikings? Yeah, a lot like that. And a lot like that. So, and, and you went through the list, but at 77, uh, um, um, Coach, Coach Schottenheimer passed away from Alzheimer's, but, uh, but I remember him in his heyday, and he was a very fine coach. Never yes. won the Super Bowl, but he was in a lot of playoff games. He, he, uh, he worked for uh, four NFL teams, and, uh, um, but uh, hardcore running and hardcore defense, that'll get you everything you need with him. Well, in that in that time frame, that was that's how you played football. That's what that's you did, you... and they did it very, very well. And what's changed? <laughs> I don't go there. Okay. Well, well, we, we still need an offensive line. You still need. An you offensive still got to have an offensive line. I don't care line. about your mobile quarterback. Anyway. No. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Leon. Leon, my man, Leon. You know, I, I first ran into Leon. Uh, my wife and I went to the Olympics in 1976. And this was really strange. It was in Montreal, and this was just four years after Munich. So things were pretty tight, and things were pretty tense. Yeah. So we went to uh, – we had track and field and swimming. We went to a soccer match between Israel and Mexico. Um, I had never been to a soccer match before. And we had boxing. I, people said, how come you didn't do wrestling? Wrestling was the next week. And so we, we were only going to stay there for a week because uh, – Oh, the second week, people really start showing up, and it gets a little bit nuts. So we, you, you can't see much of the Olympics when you're there. You, you kind of have to, you know, be with the TV. So anyway, we went um, to uh, our boxing matches one time. We had great seats. Um, about 20 feet away was Howard Cosell uh, in, in a no-smoking zone. He was sucking on a cigar. He, in fact, he, he smoked continually throughout all the matches and, and, and died of lung cancer. Go figure. Um, but we watched Leon Spinks, Michael Spinks, and this little known guy, Ray Leonard. This was before he became sugar. Okay. And, uh, and, and so we go and we watch, uh, we watched, uh, uh, the boxing team was fantastic. They had, they had all kinds of, they had all kinds of, uh, of, uh, good boxers on there, but Leon wrestled at a light heavyweight. His brother wrestled at a middle, middleweight. And, uh, and uh, Ray Leonard was a lightweight. And so the first guy we watched come out was Leon. And Leon was wrestling, or wrestling, boxing Latif Fahidi from, from uh, Egypt. Now, at the time, there were countries from all over the Middle East that were bailing out. This was the year of the 76 war and all like this, you know. So there was all kinds of things going on. And Middle Eastern teams were bailing out of the Olympics and boycotting them. And so Egypt hadn't boycotted. So we went and we realized they were still going to have a, have a boxing match. So we go. And Leon is, uh, Leon, I can't say Leon was a man of finesse. I, and in fact, I said, how would he throw his punches? Well, he didn't really throw punches. He threw hits. It was like he was banging a, a, a nail with a hammer. It was boom. Well, he took this poor guy from Egypt. And this is light heavyweight. This is about 195 pounds. And he hit him squarely right on top of the head. And Sue said, he fell down. And I said, yeah, he, sure, he certainly did fall down. And, and, and he didn't get up either. And, and so we watched Leon bounce around. He was a real character. He didn't have any front teeth. And he was, he was, he was just a character. He seemed like to be having a really good time. But just to make my point, the next day, Egypt pulled out of the Olympics. <laughs> The poor, 
Fajita, he 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 took a kick in anyway, and so he got he got to get beat up, and then and then Egypt was all done. Now um, a few days later, Leon upset the tournament favorite Sixto Surya. Sixto Surya was from Cuba, and he was defending light heavyweight champion. And and he he, he Cubans in those days they didn't have professional records; they had amateur ones, so to speak. Well, he was like thirty-eight and nothing. He, nobody ever beat this guy. And, uh, and, and, and Leon upset him. And then so, you know, he had, uh, 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 he got a heavyweight gold medal. Brother Mike would get a gold medal at middleweight. And of course, Ray, soon to be known as Sugar, Way, Sugar Leonard, would become, uh, get gold in the lightweight division. But Leon's big night came two years later in 1978. He was offered a contest by Muhammad Ali for, for a boxing match. Uh, uh, Ali was looking for an easy bout, and and Leon had only had eight matches to this, so this was kind of a warm up bout and everything like that. Uh, uh, so they thought, you know, this is almost a Rocky type thing. He's got no chance. Um, as it turned out, they got a lot more than they bargained for, and and I remember the fight, and Leon came out, and it, there was no finesse there. There were just there were he was just hitting at him, just punching relentlessly it was like a swarm of bees and and Muhammad Ali w w was trying to get his rope a dope there was no rope a dope he just kept on coming Leon was maybe 26 27 years old really fit really strong and he came on and uh, you know and he attacked and he attacked and he attacked won a split decision became became a a, a, a heavyweight champion Seven months later, Ali got it back. They they fought at the at the Superdome in New Orleans in front of seventy two thousand people. So you know, here we have Leon Spinks, popular, easygoing, completely unlikely champion, and he just knocked off the king. His life changed, not all for the good, and <laughs> he uh, he he became a he became a serious. He had a serious drinking problem. And, uh, um, but anyway, this, he's super guy. Uh, people say he was, he was as much fun. Party goers generally are, but he passed away last Friday from prostate cancer and brain damage from head hits and, uh, and, and alcohol abuse. Um, but I tell you, uh, I know that, I know that Leon Spinks was, I'm not, I'm not a much of a boxing fan anymore, but he was a highly entertaining boxer. Yeah, I, I I I recall the night when he beat Ali, and of course at that time when you're eight years old, you know Ali is is the king, and the king he doesn't the lose. King. You vote for the king because the king, yeah, when you're eight, that's what you believe. And my sister teased me unmercifully the next day about you cheered for the you were cheering for the guy who lost, and blah 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 blah. And uh, I, I've never forgotten that that. When you cheer for the champion, the guy who's supposed to win, that's what makes sports greater, the upsets. Oh, it is. And uh, that upsets do occur, and champions get knocked off their pedestals. And uh, I learned, learned a valuable lesson that day at the age of eight. Well, it, it really was a Rocky-type story because eight, eight pro fights, I mean, you have to have 25, 26 pro fights and one, win most of them before you get a chance at the champ. And uh, But, I, you know... Muhammad was the type of guy that he knows what a young fighter was. He knows what, what he was like when he was 24 and 25. Uh, he, he, he was a character to say the least. And, uh, you know, and, and, and just an incredible fighter to watch. Leon did not have that kind of finesse, but in terms of, of punching power and tough, he was right there. He was, and what can I say? He knocked off the King. He fought a couple of more times for, for the championship, but, uh, but uh, uh, Larry Holmes put the big bite on him in the, in, in the third, uh, third period, in the third uh, round, and that took care of him. Um, Larry Holmes did that to a lot of people. Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, Michael, uh, his brother Mike, was also a heavyweight champion for what? a short period of time. What? So I, the, the Spink House growing up must have been a real <laughs> work. They, they were from St. Louis. And Can you imagine the, the battles? Between battles, the uh, you know. Mom wore stripes. I just know. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So, anything else, George? Leon's gone. I feel bad. Yeah. Six, seven years old. That's way too young. 
I agree. I agree. Yeah. What else you got? I got nothing, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to tell everybody we're going to take a week off. Um, I, I talked to a lady the other day. She was talking about her, her nephew, your friend that plays over in Bismarck. Yeah. And, and she, she, she was talking about how he's going to be in the Hall of Fame over there and all the rest of that. And I says, yeah, not much happens that Ringer doesn't know know about him. So that was. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't write that one down. Uh, Mr. Lark will be a, a Hall of Fame Larker, and uh, how couldn't he be? I, I he 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 was uh, Lark baseball as far as I'm concerned for three years. I mean, everybody knew who he was. Uh, he didn't come out of the lineup uh, hardly ever, and uh, now he's out in Richmond, Virginia, getting ready for the, their baseball season to get started and. I can't wait to uh, follow along and see what Mr. Wyatt does uh, out there and uh, what, what, what's going to occur in his senior year. His, his, we, suspect, we suspect his final collegiate baseball season. We thought that was the way it was going to be last spring, but, hey, you just never know these days. You just never know about those things. And besides the way he's hitting, maybe he can take it to the next level. Uh, I know uh, he wants to. I do know that he has an aunt that was telling me about him, and she just glowed. So yeah, family's really proud of this one. Yeah, he's a good athlete. He's a better person. Yeah, well, there you are. That's, that's the yeah. best thing that somebody can say about you as far as I'm concerned. And I, I, I say it about Wyatt Ulrich. Uh, I'll say it uh, till he does something wrong. Wyatt, you listen to me now. Don't do anything. Don't make don't, me Don't, don't ever do anything wrong. <laughs> there was that, there was that, uh, the, uh, there was a song in Bye Bye Birdie. I, we did Bye Bye Birdie when I was in high school. Why can't they be like we were, perfect in every way? Yep. What's the matter with kids today? And it's, uh, uh, you know, I find kids pretty refreshing myself. Uh, <laughs> we were much worse. <laughs> so, All with, right, George. Uh, yes, we are taking a week off next week. Tim. I'm going to read some other stuff. I've got, I've got things to do and well, things to write. So we'll have, uh, we'll have a couple weeks worth of stuff the next time we chat and – and uh, we'll go from there. I just, I need a break. I'm sorry, everybody. I know we only no, 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 no. Yeah, you, you've been working really hard. I, I, I agree. This was, when I said this was a good idea, this was a good idea. Besides, Super Bowl's over, and I'm going to be going through a, a mild depression here for no football. <laughs> uh, I, I know it, and there's nothing I can do about it. And so, you know. Uh, more wrestling, George. More wrestling. And volleyball. More wrestling. Volleyball. Absolutely. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you guys the next time. George, we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Take care.